new axes and knives at the 2019 Atlanta Blade Show. William Hovey Smith. My interest in knives comes from several directions. First, I am an author, a hunter, and a wild game cook. Secondly, I also have a series of business books. And third, I'm a knife maker myself, so we go there to, first off, uh, find out what we can use, pick up some new materials, and see if we can find any useful business tips about how to make and market knives. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and I'm at the 219 Bait Show in Atlanta, and things are about to get open up here, and we're going to wander in and look at some knives and look at some axes and other things. Uh, the show is going to open in about 15 minutes. This is Sunday, the last day. So people are lining up already for bargains and seeing what they can find. And we are at Hardcore Hammers. And Hardcore Hammers sells hammers and axes and hatchets and other stuff. And they have some really interesting materials here this year at the show. Their feature piece is a real unusual axe that they hand forge. And this axe is superb. Uh, it has a very sharp tapered blade, as will be seen shortly. So it's ideal for both cutting and splitting. It's available in two handle sizes, one with a curve and one with a straight and also in two different weights. Uh, what weight is he holding now? So you see Steve here holding our three pound Raptor axe with the straight handle. And we also have a four pound version that has an additional one pound of weight on the back side that can be used as a maul or a splitting wedge for driving stakes and anything else that needs to be hit with a sledgehammer. Yes, sir. Now, you also have some smaller versions in the way of hatchets. We do. We have three different styles of hatchets. That one that Steve's holding right now is our most popular version. That's our survivalist with a little bit of custom artwork on the handle. And what we've done is incorporate into a hatchet the same blade design that allows for spectacular splitting and cutting for a hatchet that's only 19 ounces. Yes, sir. On the back side of it, you can see the feature that on the hammer side has a recessed waffle striking surface on it that allows it to be used as both a finish hammer and a framing hammer in one, and I'll, thereby giving you both the advantages mm -hmm. of, of um, two mm -hmm. hammers at one time. Uh, concerning your wedging system that you have on the end of the hatchet? Yes. Uh, tell me about that a little bit. That looks a little different. So we use barrel wedges, and they come in different sizes for different applications, but the advantage to a barrel wedge is that it forces the wood out in 360 degrees direction. So you have equal pressure all the way around that holds that, uh, that handle onto the head yes, sir. really tight. Now you have the decorated versions, of course, and I would suppose that those sell for an extra price. They do, yeah. We sell those for $400, where without, just, without the artwork, it's typically a $135 hatchet. Very well. Now you also have a conventional claw hammer there on the end, I notice. We sure do, and it's um, not really conventional. Um, this one here is our smooth-faced version. This is our own design, uh, designed specifically for carpenters. Mm -hmm. And uh, the original idea came from having the, the hardened core pressed into the face of it with the waffle on it. And that's where the, uh, the hardcore hammer's name came from. So you get the advantages of not having to switch from one hammer to another when you're doing rough framing or finish work. Excellent. Very well. Now, where can people go to find out about your uh, axes and hammers and stuff? Well, the easiest place would be at hardcorehammers.com. We also sell on Amazon and a number of venues uh, across the country. So, but we can be reached at, um, at hardcorehammers.com for a full catalog and all pricing and shipping options. Very well. Well, thanks very much, and good luck at the show. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate your time. Okay. 
I purchased the four pound version of that axe and as you can see I have more than a little bit of material to use it on. I have done a little bit of chopping with it and a little bit of splitting with it thus far and the hardcore hammer axe has done very well. But look for more videos as I work up more material with it. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and I'm talking to Brian Moreland of JB Knife and Tool of San Antonio, Texas. And Brian has one of the most unusual knives here at the 219 Blade Show, and Brian is going to tell us about it. Brian, that is a most unusual and wicked looking blade. How in the world did you come up with such a design? Well, thanks for that. This, uh, this design was a collaboration between Ed Calderon and, and, our, and us. Um, it's a traditional tool from Mexico. It's our tape on a traditional tool from Mexico that was used as a farming tool. Uh, it was used to castrate goats. The original goat knife had a goat, uh, goat horn handle, and the, the blade was forged as a hook to kind of fit into that, into that horn shape. Uh, so Ed wanted to do his take on a traditional Mexican, Mexican farming tool. Uh, traditional uses were for castrating goats, uh, gutting and cleaning an animal, uh, the cartels and some different folks in that area got to use it for a self-defense knife and, and, and so Ed's kind of bringing it to us as a self-defense tool as well. So uh, in a self-defense situation you would use it uh, across the back, in a clinch under the armpit, uh, back across the hamstring, anything you would use like uh, kind of a hook or pulling motion for it. So that's the, uh, that's the Socotrepus kind of in a nutshell. And, uh, it's, it's a, it's a handy tool, it's definitely a little different, a little odd, so it takes some getting used to holding it and whatnot, but uh, once you get used to it, it's a very comfortable blade. All right, now give us the name again. It's a Socotrepus. And tell us how you spell it. S-A-C-A-T-R-A-P-A-S. <laughs> very well, and where can people go to find out about it? Uh, you can go to our Instagram page at uh, JB Knife or our website at uh, jbknifeandtool.com. And what does such a thing cost? It costs uh, two twenty-five without a sheet and two fifty with a pocket sheet. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. And watch out for them goats. That's right. <laughs> Doc Schiffer was a Navy corpsman who served with Marine units in Iraq. And he was looking for knives, and he couldn't find one he liked, so he designed his own. And so he's been making the bottom knife for a series of years, and his son, who's now joined him in the business, has made this other knife at the top with a very interesting Damascus blade. And this was an interesting pair that we found at the show. Now, Case Knives has come up with a new knife. It's called a shark. Case, as you well know, uh, is noted for bringing out collector's editions of its past innumerable patterns of knives and handling them in various materials and calling them new, etc., etc., etc. But this is really a new knife. Uh, it is a flipper. It's just introduced. It's not available for sale yet. And I requested one for testing, and so you'll be hearing more about that one later. Now, you see some really beautiful knives at the show, and this happened to be a prize-winning dagger from a French manufacturer. Now, since I'm interested in cooking knives, uh, this is a take on a primitive style and design of chef's knife, uh, which has some interesting characteristics, and I have no doubt will cut very well. Now, this is a novelty knife from Fox Knives of Italy. Now, and that blade is thin. It is after an ancient roll and really giving it some hard use cutting up my pecan trees when they fall. And I can certainly recommend that. Now, among the knife accessories was Brad Shelby here, who has his knife sharpening system. That, yeah, that really works. Uh, you give him his knife and, and a few strikes, uh, yeah, he'll put a, a razor edge on it. And uh, he's been demonstrating that for the show for, oh, I don't know how many years, but a number of years. So I bought one of those, too. Now, for my own knives, I'm involved in a movie project. Uh, this is now in the stage of writing the novel. And one of the characters is going to use a distinctive blade. This is of ancient Sicilian origin. 
and it was described as a wavy blade, and it was so deadly that it was outlawed by the Greeks. So although the original was made in bronze and made in Europe, uh, this pattern of blade and knife has not been seen for 2,000 years. But we're going to make it. So we picked us up some Damascus to make the finished knife, as well as some mild steel uh, just to make the patterns. Now this is part of the groom's project. It takes place in the U.S. and Sicily. And basically the plot is a Sicilian family lives in Louisiana. And they've been there for three generations, and Dad wants to make a visit back to Sicily. Well, uh, his two sons are having marital problems and can't seem to get or stay married, so he says he's going to introduce them to some nice Sicilian gals. Well, uh, their Sicilian relatives take this a bit more seriously. Uh, they consider this a contract and an arranged marriage, and when the American family arrives, they arrive on Monday, and they find out that the wedding is going to be on Friday. Whoa! Well, the two guys want to sort of back out, uh, but uh, the Sicilian family won't have it. Uh, they've already spent uh, something upwards of 25,000 euros in getting everything arranged. And like it or not, this wedding is going to happen on Friday. Uh, nobody's going to leave that island alive. Uh, they are presented with quite a problem uh, during the course of their tour through Sicily and their ultimate wedding, which is set for Friday. And uh, whilst there, I did do a series of videos and you can see those online. Uh, they're up right now. Uh, this is a picture of some of the 18 books that I've done. These happen to be the soft cover titles. I also have a series of e-books on muzzleloading. For more information on my 18 books and e-books and over 750 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. For additional information on Father of the Grooms, the book, the screenplay, and the movie project, and how you can actually participate in it, you can go to fatherofthegrooms.net. Now stay tuned for additional videos about the hardcore hammer axe that I'm going to do when I chop up that wood and the bill of Luigi the Claw's knife. Now this knife was considered to be so deadly that it was outlawed for civilized combat, and the Greeks forbade it to be ever manufactured again. It's going to be an interesting thing. Goodbye and God bless. See you in the movies.